And you're still on to Cosmopolitan Market on the Nigeria Customs Broadcasting Network. And just before the break, I had said that my guest, who is Kingsley Fanwo, and he's the Commissioner for Information and Communication in Kogi State, shall be joining me to discuss issues around economic development and the role of subnational government. And he is joining me right now virtually. Welcome to the program, sir. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. And uh, thanks for having me. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. Indeed, it's a pleasure having you on the program. I would just begin by asking you, how would you say the Nigerian state is faring currently, especially economically? How would you say Nigeria is faring economically as we speak? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we were getting it uh, right before the uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic uh, devastated the economy of the country. We were moving uh, closer to uh, food production uh, proficiency, especially uh, staple food like rice in the country. Uh, but the pandemic has uh, settled uh, backwards uh, and has dealt a devastating blow on the economy of the country. Uh, that led us into a recession. Uh, and thank God the outlook is uh, getting better now, as uh, it has been reported that we are coming out gradually. Uh, from that very terrible recession. Of course, it is no news that the year 2020 was an unprecedented year, and we saw the Nigerian economy suffer from the from the impact of COVID-19. And um, you made a very valid point. You said that we were getting it right until the advent of COVID-19. Are you saying that um, thereafter we haven't been getting it right? Because um, I'm going to be saying that we have seen quite a number of interventions from the government, especially with regards to the sector, especially in the anchor Pro borrowers program and other interventions basically from the government. Are you saying that that is not enough? With the global uh, the, the global fortune of oil, uh, oil production and oil prices, uh, the, the surest path to economic development around the globe is to concentrate on agriculture. Uh, we have to look at the, uh, uh, the green economy and ensure that we can produce food uh, for the populace uh, of Nigeria. Uh, the, the various lockdowns uh, during the pandemic and uh, the, the fact that people could not go uh, to their farms farm to engage in agricultural practices uh, actually uh, uh, reversed all the gains uh, recorded before uh, the outbreak of, of the pandemic. And that is uh, seriously affecting the economy of the nation uh, as we speak. So we have to we mm. have to uh, remark, uh, remark our way okay. into rebounding the economy from the devastating blow of the pandemic. And the, the, the best way to go is to ensure that um, we come back to agriculture and ensure that we have food uh, production sufficiency in the country. Indeed. Talking about food production and sufficiency, like you have correctly mentioned, I mean, recently we saw the governor of Kogi State, Yahaya Bello, um, help call a truce to bring an end to food strike or blockade. Can you take us through um, how this event unfolded from the start to the finish? Uh, thank you very much. Very much. Uh, beyond the shortage of food in the south, uh, as a result of the blockade, uh, it, it goes beyond that. We also look at the issue of national unity, uh, national cohesion, uh, ensuring we, bring, we build bridges across the different regions of the country and ensure that we have very positive handshakes uh, across the country. So when it was reported, uh, the governor, as a national leader, uh, stepped into the situation and rose to the occasion uh, to be able to uh, get a truce uh, out, out of the whole in uh, by settling the dispute between the northern and the southern uh, uh, regions. And uh, today, uh, the blockade has been removed and the food is freely flowing from the north to the south and from the south to the north. That is what we need to, to continue uh, to ensure that we battle out of the economic hardship and economic shambles imposed on us by the COVID-19 pandemic. 
Still talking on the food blockade situation that we saw the governor of Kogi State, Yahaya Bello, step into to call a truce. Can you run us through how um, this situation got to where it got to? How, when did it start? How did it grow to the point where, where we saw it grow to? Because it eventually led to a strike action between, um, between both parties. Can you, can you kindly run us through how this event unfolded? Yeah, there, there were there were complaints by the northern uh, farmers uh, because some of their some of their kinsmen in the in the south, especially uh, the southwest, were allegedly attacked uh, by the people, and also some of their uh, trucks uh, carrying uh, foodstuffs from the north to the south uh, were extorted by security. Were allegedly extorted by security uh, agents. Uh, on the on on their way to the south. So because of this, they started to it was a protest uh, to ensure that some of these anomalies were fixed. And when the governor uh, saw the looming danger and the food scarcity that uh, was already ravaging mm -hmm. the entire southern part of the country as a result of the blockade, he decided to speak with the leadership of uh, the northern farmers, the northern traders, and also uh, those in the south to ensure that. Uh, we could uh, uh, fashion out a truce and ensure peace among them. Uh, that was agreed on. They gave uh, conditions uh, which con which were delivered to Mr. President uh, and, uh, you know, he, he did that yesterday and there were all already directed to security uh, agencies around the country to ensure that uh, uh, transporters of food stock uh, are not uh, made to go through a uh, harrowing experiences. Uh, I think it's it, Indeed, I agree with you, Mr. Kingsley. However, what do you, what measures would you recommend that um, should be taken to um, so this situation like this doesn't repeat itself? So moving forward, we don't have um, situations like this happen all over again. We, we, we can we can dichotomize this into um, the short and the and the long term uh, and the long term um, measures that should be taken to ensure that we resolve this. One, we must ensure that we force our unity in the country. Nigeria is a nation, a nation of various ethnicities. So we need to continue to see the nation as one. That is one of the measures that we need to uh, take. On the long term, uh, I think it's an eye-opener uh, that we need to produce food more in the southern part of the country mm -hmm. uh, because the few days of blockade uh, was devastating. So we need to concentrate on agriculture. We need to look at um, mechanization and uh, all that. When we are able to do this, it will um, it will it will help uh, us as a nation to to be able to develop uh, and uh, ensure uh, food production and sufficiency in the country. Away from food production now, sir. Uh, recently, we got news that the gold processing cluster recently inaugurated in Kogi State. And there has been calls about states looking inward to generate uh, more internally generated revenue. Can you tell us more about um, how Kogi State is faring in that regard, especially with regards to the gold processing cluster that was recently inaugurated in the state? Yeah, it is a step in the right direction. Uh, uh, by Mr. President to diversify the economy and ensure that we tap into um, our, our solid minerals and um, ensure that we are able to uh, add value to uh, what we have. Uh, Kobe uh, has 90% of the solid minerals, or the mineral resources available in the country today. Uh, so because of that, uh, the, country, uh, the, the federal government in this street uh, to fight the cluster, the, the, the gold processing cluster of the North Central uh, uh, in Kogi State. And it, it uh, was situated in, in Mopam, a local government area uh, of the state. Uh, what this is going to uh, ensure is that instead of selling the raw gold, uh, they will be able to process it and add value to it to be able to uh, ensure we have the right pricing of, of, the, of the mineral resources. So that is that is what is happening now, and it's a very, uh, it's a very laudable project and initiated by the federal government uh, to ensure that um, we we um, we devise the right economic uh, policy to be able to help grow the economy. 
uh, to provide uh, jobs for the youth and also uh, improve uh, the overall economy of uh, uh, the state, the North Central and the nation at large. So it is a very beautiful initiative. Talking about government policies, like you have rightly mentioned, what modalities, or do I say policies, um, will this uh, mining cluster be running on? Because just recently we saw um, the issues happening with the mining, uh, with mining in Zamfara State. So what modalities will the mining cluster be running on to ensure that we don't see a reoccurrence of what happened in Zamfara State, in, happening in Kogi State? The issue in Zambra is quite different from what uh, we are having in Kobe State at the moment. Uh, the issue in Zambra uh, has to do with illegal mining, uh, but now we are having controlled mining uh, in, in a way that uh, before you just go to the mining field, you have your license, and uh, even what you mine will be brought to the cluster uh, for processing and value addition. So they, they are quite they are quite different. So what what should happen in Zambra, uh, for instance? It's what is already happening in COVID state, and the federal government should uh, ensure that wherever we have all these solid minerals, we put in place controlled mechanisms to be able to control, uh, to be able to control mining, to control processing, and ensure that we get value uh, for money. So the one in COVID state is, is not expected to snowball into such uh, an on uh, it is organized and, and very to, to a very large extent criminal tendency. Uh, we, we are having a very controlled system in the state, and that is going to be a very big one for our economy. Can you let us in on what you mean by controlled mining? Controlled mining means that the government ensures the creation of an enabling environment for miners to be able to uh, carry out their businesses legally. Okay, so with the controlled mining, there is a legal backing behind all of that. There is a legal backing. You cannot just go to um, to a gold street, for instance, and start mining. You must have your license uh, from the Federal Ministry of Mines. Uh, you are licensed to you are licensed to to be able to mine there. And when you mine, you bring uh, the the raw gold to the processing cluster, to the process. So instead of selling. Uh, good for two naira, the raw one for two naira, you add value and able to sell it at a very higher price. So it is, it is something that is great. Indeed, indeed. With what you've explained, I can I can say that that is indeed great. Uh, but still talking on, on internally generated revenue by um, state, I am quite aware that the Ajakota Steel Complex is a federal government project. But is there some work being done by um, the state government towards its revival? Because I'm quite aware that it has it has laid fallow of. It has let, laid fallow for, for quite a while. What would you say is being done by the state government um, towards its revival? Yeah, as you are aware, it is a project owned by the federal government of Nigeria. And um, we know, uh, because it is situated in, in COVID space, uh, we know the economic benefits that we can derive if, if the Ajakuta State Company is, is working optimally. So the, the state government has um, uh, spent a lot of delegations and have and has engaged uh, the federal government on various occasions to ensure that uh, the project is resuscitated. Uh, also, as a state government, we are very confident in the administration of our, our President Muhammad uh, Buhari to ensure that before he leaves office in 2023, uh, Ajakuta is brought back to life. And we have also been very proactive as a state government uh, to ensure the establishment of a University of Science and Technology uh, very close to uh, the uh, location of the Ajakuta Steel Company uh, so that we can provide uh, quality manpower uh, to be able to drive the industry. Talking about manpower, the year, like I said earlier, the year 2020 was a very unprecedented year. Aside from the fact that we are seeing many Nigerians come out of employment, we saw lots of people lose their jobs. And on the other hand, we see unemployment numbers increase by the state. What is, by the day, by the, what is Kogi State doing, especially with empowerment, not just to the older, older people, but particularly with regards to youth employment in the state? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, part of uh, the things we are doing is to be able to... There is, there is one thing 
to be working to ensure employment. Uh, there is another to ensure that you create an army of an employable youth. Mm. Uh, there are many youth on the street today that are not employable mm. because they, they don't have the capacity to render out any kind of service. So what we are doing as a government is to be able to build the capacity uh, in the youth so that when the opportunity will come, uh, they will be able to take the opportunity uh, and use it effectively. Uh, also, we apart from building capacity, uh, we are also trying to give a lot of orientation uh, to young minds in the state uh, to know that it is not going to be all about white collar jobs. Uh, they can also look at the green collar jobs in the agricultural sector uh, and also in, um, in, in artisanship. So these are some of the things that we are doing in the state uh, to be able to ensure we create that environment through which uh, youth could improve their capacity uh, to be employable. And also, the University of Science and Technology is to train uh, quality and manpower in mining, in engineering, in all sorts of um, engineering, science, and technology training for free to be able to ensure that uh, youth that graduate from uh, this university are employable. Okay, um, let's talk on, still talking about uh, empowerment or youth empowerment. Um, of course, the Nigerian people are said to be Nigeria's um, biggest resource. Um, what would you say, uh, and there's been a lot of, a lot of postulations rather about the sub-national governments need to do more, especially in regards to human capital um, development. Uh, you have mentioned that there are quite a number of projects that the state government has gone into to empower the people of Kogi State, not just with regards to white collar jobs, but like you said, um, including green collar jobs. Can you give us more specific details into what the state is doing in that regard? And this is still Cosmopolitan Market on the Nigeria Customs Broadcasting Network. And just before the break, I was discussing with my guest, who is Kingsley Fanwo, and he is the Commissioner for Information and Communication in Kogi State. And before the break, he was briefing me on um, what the government in Kogi, in Kogi State is doing, especially in regards to creating jobs, but not just white-collar jobs. He did say that the government is also um, doing things with regards to encouraging youth into um, going into green collar jobs, so he called it. Uh, Mr. Kingsley, are you still with me? Yes, I'm with you. Okay. Um, can you kindly tell, um, take us through um, specific um, interventions that the government in Kogi State has gone into, especially in regards to youth empowerment pre-COVID, uh, after the COVID, um, the advent of COVID in Nigeria? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, like I said, we are doing everything uh, to build capacity, to build the capacity of our youth uh, to take uh, up jobs. Uh, and I did say that there is a difference between unemployment and um, a situation where we have youth that are not even employable. So we are building the capacity of our youth to be employable, to be able to fit into uh, different uh, kinds of roles in different kinds of industries. Uh, we know that the white collar jobs uh, are not uh, uh, as, as, as uh, much as uh, it used to be, but what we are trying to do is to ensure that we encourage them uh, to go into agriculture, uh, to go into mining, and all, uh, uh, all other kinds of uh, very lucrative uh, fields uh, that, uh, that are not within the category of the white collar jobs. So we've been doing a lot to train our youth across the 21 local government uh, councils uh, to be able to take up these jobs. Apart from training them, we've been able to buy a lot of uh, work tools for them uh, to be able to work with. And this is uh, seriously impacting on their uh, uh, ability to not only think for themselves and the family, but also become employers of labor uh, rather than being uh, perennial applicants uh, in, in offices. So we are doing this. Also in the field of agriculture, uh, the state government procured uh, a lot of agricultural uh, machines, uh, tractors, uh, tractors were procured uh, and distributed across the 21 local government councils uh, so that 
our youth uh, uh, could go into mechanized uh, farming. Uh, these are some of the things that uh, we have done uh, to be able to create jobs uh, in, in the state. Also, when you look at um, uh, uh, the establishment of the complex University of Science and Technology, uh, we hope to be able to use uh, the Citadel to train a lot of a lot of our uh, youth in uh, artisanship uh, to be, to become very competent and efficient engineers uh, to be able to fit into uh, the various industries and companies that are springing up in the in the state as a result of the abundance of mineral resources in COVID state. Mr. Kingsley, I am quite curious. I would want to know what is happening, especially in terms of um, attracting investment into the state. What has the state government been up to with, um, in that regard, in terms of attracting investment into the state? To attract investment to any state, the number one requirement is to ensure security of lives and property. Uh, because no investor will want to uh, bring investment to uh, where he or she is not starting of the safety of uh, his or her equipment and the employees. Uh, so the state government has concentrated uh, so much in ensuring that Kogi remains uh, one of the safest states in the country today. We invested heavily in ensuring security of lives and property in the state. And that is uh, enticing enough for investors around the world. Uh, you would recall that the last quarter of last year, uh, Kogi was rated as the state that attracted the heaviest, the heaviest amount of investment into any state in Nigeria. Uh, so that shows that we are getting that right. Also, we ensure that uh, our, our laws are accommodating enough mm. uh, to ensure that we protect uh, investment uh, within the state. That is also uh, working effectively. We are also communicating opportunities in the state to the outside world. Uh, you would recall that uh, just about two weeks ago, uh, the gold mining uh, uh, processing cluster was established in Kogi State. Uh, this, is, this is part of the uh, confidence that the federal government has in the state uh, to be able to protect that investment. Uh, so these are some of the measures that uh, we are taking uh, to ensure that we attract investment. Also, you, you will recall that in terms of infrastructure, uh, we are doing a lot. Uh, we are the first state government uh, to release billions for capital projects uh, in the first quarter of this year. Uh, close to $4 billion was released to contractors uh, so that they could construct roads, hospitals, schools across the state. So this infrastructure uh, helped to entice investors uh, into the state. Mr. Kingsley, can you tell us how, okay, Nigeria is said to not be the easiest place to do, a bi to do business in. I mean, in the World Bank ease of business ranking, Nigeria, Nigeria isn't faring too well in that ranking. How would you say the, the business environment in Kogi State is? Is it easy to do business in, in, in Kogi State? Yes, we, we, have, um, we have a lot of agencies that we have created uh, where we can have, where we talk about a one-stop shop. Uh, you can do all your processing, uh, uh, moving from one table to another in the same office. Uh, also, we ensure that our tax laws are very friendly to investors. Mm. Uh, and that's why you see a lot of very heavy investment are thriving in the state, uh, the largest demand. A company in the entire West Africa is doing very well in Kogi State, which is Dangote Cement Company. Uh, you have Unicain, you have a lot of A great investments in the state that are doing very well. Uh, we, are, we are achieving this uh, because of the factors I told you earlier security, our tax laws are very friendly, we are providing infrastructure, and you know that's why you see a lot of investors trooping to Kogi State to do business. Mm. Okay, just before we go, sir, we would like to know your final thoughts, especially regards to economic development, not just in, at the state level now, but at the national level. What, um, what advice would you be putting out there to the government at the federal um, level? Uh, thank you very thank much. We have, um, we have hidden youth across the country. They have the energy, the 
have the intellect, this country must look for ways of harnessing this energy and intellectual giant sleeping in the youth. We must ensure that we create an environment through which they could thrive and ensure that they develop. This is, this is, we cannot, we cannot uh, do without this. It's non-negotiable. Mm. Uh, so that they will not be uh, deploying their energy into uh, things like NSAS and all that. So we must ensure that we engage them, we train them, we uh, improve education, uh, not just the education that uh, deals with theory, but education that deals with practical. Engineers that are real engineers. Uh, we must begin to look around this conversation uh, as a nation. Apart from that, we, we must invest heavily in agriculture. That is the way to go. Countries like Indonesia and the Asian Tigers are doing so well in agriculture today. We have all the conditions that could make us the agricultural hub of the world. So we must invest heavily. We must, just like the Vice President uh, 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 said a few days ago, uh, at the same time, we have, we have, we have seen all the, all the things they've turned out. It is time to, it is time to see uh, what we do with those policies. So we must do a lot to improve agriculture. Also, solid minerals. We must ensure that we develop that sector and make it the money spinner for the country. Indeed, I have been speaking with Mr. Kingsley Fanwo, who is the Commissioner for Information and Communication in Kogi State. And we have been speaking about issues um, surrounding economic development, especially at the sub-national government. Thank you again, sir, for joining us on the program. Thank you very much. Thank you. And this is where we draw the curtains on today's episode of Cosmopolitan Market on the Nigeria Customs Broadcasting Network. Rate, network rather. Uh, do well to join us again, same time, same station next week, as we promise to be back with you on Monday as the Cosmopolitan Market comes to you every day by 11 a.m. And just before we go, I'd just like to put it out there and send a shout out to Cre Gifts Gmo, rather, who is Shemame and is a staff of the NCBN. Happy birthday, Gift. We wish you all the best this year. And this is where we draw the curtains. And from myself and the entire crew right here in the studio, it's bye for now.